For those of you Star Rail enjoyers who have been waiting for that second Ron May for that other MOC team of yours, then look no further because Robin is here. She has now become the second DPS support unit that can literally fit into any team you want and is also the first support that you can somewhat consider as a berserker support. Without further ado, let's jump right into seeing how you can use her wide range of a kit and how to best use her capabilities to your liking. The name's Leafy and this is Casual Guides to Games Star Rail Edition. Right, let's go over how you want to build her in a flash. There are two main ways for you to choose when it comes to which type of Robin you want in your team. The first type of Robin is what I call the Batman Robin, which will focus on using her concerto damage to beat up your opponent alongside buffing your team. Or you have the full singer support Robin, who will focus all her stats into fully buffing your team instead. Both are usable ways of going about building her, so just choose whichever suits you better. Now I want to skip over to the relics part first because it's actually a bit more complicated depending on what you want to prioritize. A set combo that works for both types of robins though is the musketeer plus prisoner set. This gives you a great amount of attack that makes it very feasible on both playstyles. One that's a bit more for batman robin is the 4 piece physical set. That being said, it takes a while for it to actually ramp up and get all the buffs that you need from that set, and if you don't have it or you are unwilling to spend the fuel to farm it, then the first musketeer and prisoner combo will do just fine. And the same can be said for full support robin. But if you're like me and you want to treat your robin more like a second run may, then I personally use two piece musketeer with hacker space for that little bit of speed since my rolls in good speed substat is about as good as my rolls in Genshin. That being said, I don't know what happened this time around, but somehow I was able to get a lot of speed on her substats, plus the speed boots, so don't feel the need to match this Robin speed. Anywhere between 120 to 130 speed for her is more than enough. For planner sets, Space Ceiling Station is great for Batman Robin, and you might want to consider getting a Fizz Damage Sphere rather than an Attack one, while pairing it up with either an Energy Regen or an Attack Percent Rope, depending on what you need. While for full support, I think Fleet of the Ageless is a solid choice overall. I'm just still using Broken Keel cause my luck has been ass on those two other sets so I can't be bothered to change it up at the moment. All in all. Prioritize getting a lot of attack percent before you branch off to get that speed up. Oh, and by the way, if you can't make up your mind and you just want to make like a half and half version between Batman Robin and full support Robin, then feel free to try it out. Moving to her light cone options, this one is a little bit more straightforward. Flowing Night Glow is of course her absolute best choice regardless of which Robin you are building considering the huge balance of ER and attack percent that you're getting from it. A more F2P choice for Batman Robin, however, would be the For Tomorrow's Journey that you can get from the latest event. Non-existent ER, but good damage boost for her concerto attacks. For full support, or a full ER build, then Meshing Cogs or Memories of the Past are half-decent choices, but they both come with their own drawbacks, so keep those in mind when you're choosing between them. Or if you've been going through the peak Star Rail experience and you have Pranya's light cone instead of Pranya herself, then that's also a decent overall choice to use on Robin, should you still want to have those sweet 5 star light cone stats. Once you've decided how you want to build your Robin, then this is where the fun begins. Which is to... Tonight, the stars echo because of me! And the best part is, you can straight up do this in any team. Okay, I'm not saying that she will always be the best choice in every sort of team under the sun. No, of course, there will be other options for a certain team that would probably be more effective than her. But just like Ron May, she'll always have a good chunk of her kit be beneficial to any team you put her in. In terms of how she would fit in certain playstyles, then I would rank it like this. In DOT teams, she would do pretty well. Sure, most Nihilities bar Acheron and Welt probably won't be able to use that crit damage bonus of hers, but since DOT scales off attack, 
This means her concerto buff and her skill buff will still be of very big use to nihility damage. Meanwhile, in hyper carry teams like Jing Liu and Imbibiter Lune, she will do very well. Not only will they also benefit from that attack boost, they can now use some of that crit damage boost talent that she has. And if you're like me and you had to sacrifice your hyper carry speed for some more attack and you weren't able to get any speed substats on them, then her ultimate instant action forward for all allies will be a massive help to deal with your speed issues. Now then, that leaves follow-up attack teams as the last type of team you should consider. And as a lot of you would have probably known by now, this is the best type of team to use if you want to utilize Robin to her full potential. Not only because of that trace of hers which increased the crit damage of all follow-up attack by 25%, but it is also because you can pull off more attacks in a set amount of time, providing more opportunities for Robin herself to deal damage when you're in her concerto state. Plus, if you happen to have her signature light cone, there's a better chance for you to reach max stacks of its cantillation buff, which gives more and more ER for Robin. This way, you're more than likely to take a very small amount of time before her ult will be back online. I have to mention though, that unless your entire team have crippling depression levels of speed, you'd probably get to the max stacks of that light cone's cantillation buff with all the other teams anyway. It's just that with a follow-up attack team, you literally won't have to think about it at all since you're probably definitely gonna get max stacks regardless of what speed you have in your team. I mentioned how she will do in each type of these teams due to the fact that there will be many people who will argue that there are better supports for each of those other categories. Hyper carry players will probably say that Sparkle or Branya are better suited for them, while DOT players would probably go for Ruan Mei or a debuffer like Pela instead. While those are obviously correct statements, seeing as those supports have kits that are more streamlined towards each of those playstyles, that doesn't mean that you should outright disqualify Robin when you're choosing a support for those kind of themes. Not everyone will have those other characters I just mentioned, and like I said before, Robin is basically the second Ron May. Their kits will always provide your team with something of use, and it won't feel like a sacrifice to be putting her into any kind of team. This is also because Robin herself has traces that make her very independent as a support character. Her talent, when used before battle, will give her more energy every time a new wave of enemies come up, and she has action forward and more energy regen capabilities through her other traces. She even has full crowd control resist when Concerto is active, technically because she kinda crowd controls herself, but that also means that you don't have to worry about her not getting a turn, since once her Concerto ends, she will immediately get one regardless of what is happening in the battle. Speaking of her Concerto, Let's move on to how that particular skill works. So her ultimate will immediately make all her allies take action and provides a party-wide buff which raises their attack based on a certain percentage of Robin's attack plus an extra flat amount determined by the skill's level. She then also gains the ability to be somewhat of a pseudo follow-up attacker where every hit your allies do will be followed up by a hit from Robin herself which already has a set scaling for its attack and crit stat ratios. Kind of like how Ron May will deal extra break ice damage every time her allies break an enemy. It doesn't count as follow up attack, but deals damage regardless. In terms of how you should be using it in battle, there's one thing that you should definitely do before you ult, which is to use her skill. Because if you ult before that, then you will miss out on the extra damage buff while your Robin will be stuck doing her ultimate. Because she can't move as long as her concerto state is active. Meanwhile, if you have the buff up before that, then you will essentially have a prolonged period of uptime for her damage boost, since its count won't go down until Robin herself gets a turn. When you want to ult in your team cycle, however, will be up to you, since there are some people who would just skill and then ult immediately if they can do it at the start of the battle, but there are also others who go through a whole cycle of their team's turn before ulting to essentially give themselves another turn. Personally, I like to do the second one more often and I think it offers much more usability from your team, but if you're too horny and just want to go for it, then by all means I guess. Oh, and here's a little bit of an easter egg about Robin's ultimate song. There are occasions where the song won't play and she'll just completely skip it, 
And the way you can tell is that if you start ulting and then she says, rise up into my world. I see through you. That means the song is just gonna keep going. But if she immediately goes, no more ties. That means she's not gonna play the song and the whatever background music that is playing in that battle will keep on going. Just a little something for you to take note of. Now the last thing I want to talk about is how the synergy between her light cone and her own kit works. Basically, her signature light cone is made in a way that will allow for her to gain cantillation stacks which gives more energy regen whilst she's stuck in her concerto mode. This is so that when the duration of her ult ends, she will have fat stacks of ER that will help her get back to her ult in a much faster capacity. And then, once you've cycled through your turns and get your ult back and use it, the second part of its buff, Cadenza, will activate which gives her an additional attack boost that will help to add more scaling to her concerto's overall buff value and the damage that she does through that follow-up attack thing, all while also providing your team with a party-wide damage boost. Afterwards, it's just rinse and repeating the cycle of using the light cone's first half of the buff and then the light cone's second half of the buff. And that's about all you really need to know to start using Robin in your team. With how versatile her kit is, I highly recommend pulling for her since she can very easily fit into more teams in the future, in a way that requires way less thinking from your part. Build her to how you want to build her and put her to any team that you see fit, and just simply enjoy going Okay, okay, okay. Do it in your own time. My mind's gonna do a mental break dance if I hear that song one more time. Anyway, that's about it. Thanks for making it this far in the video, and good luck for those who are pulling in this patch, whether it's for Robin, Boot Hill, or any of the rerun characters. Hope this video helped you in some way, and if you like it, do leave a like, and if you don't, then feel free to dislike, and leave your thoughts in the comments down below. The name's Leafy, and until the next video, I'll see y'all next time. Sayonara.